One of the things that comes up a lot in terms of thinking about going to a resource capacity planning tool is how to take the Excel, it's not how to convert the Excel spreadsheet, but how to change your thinking from what you've probably been doing in Excel over to how you should be thinking about what you're doing once you're in the tool so that you can start to provide data to management. So let's be really clear. Only people doing it ever look at the Excel spreadsheet. When you move to a tool, other people are going to start seeing it and they're going to want to start seeing it in a way they can understand it and start to work with the data. The very first thing you're going to have to do is stop using percents. Now you go, why? It's perfectly appropriate. I could schedule somebody's time as a percentage. And I'm going to tell you, yeah, you can. But what gets hidden from the human brain is what does that actually mean? You might think that 10% actually translates into somebody's ability to do something. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't. And that's critical. You go to hours. Why? Because it's the clock that's sitting in everybody's office clicking down. And if you start to say to somebody, and I actually tested this out myself, uh, if you are coding something for a project, how much time, and we'll give it a reasonable level of complexity, how much time is it going to take? And if there's an answer, one, they're not going to answer 20% of my time or 100% of my time. They're going to talk about something that every project manager understands is a work estimate. So let's just pretend they give us a work estimate of 40 hours. Now, if you have a human being and you assign that human being 30% of their time on maintenance and enhancements, 30% of their time on project A, this is M and E, and 40% on project B. And we've got work of 40 hours for project B. How long is it going to take to actually do that? Well, we know we've got some overhead factor, meetings, something. A lot of clients I've seen have used 85% as productive time. Yeah, that's probably not really accurate. So we start to lose time there. Then we have task switching costs. And the research on task switching is extremely interesting. It can, if you're really doing heads down work and somebody interrupts you, even interrupts you by having a, and I just read this research a couple of weeks ago, just having a conversation standing by you. So you're working hard and they're talking about something on the, over you. That can take you an hour to recover from because of the human brain. In fact, when somebody's standing next to you talking about something but not talking to you, your brain becomes even more engaged <laughs> in listening to them. That's how the human brain works. Now, obviously, we have a lot of uh, IT departments where people have headphones. We understand that. But task switching 
is real. So there's a cost. We've got overhead activities, meetings, other things. So how much time do we really have? We wrote 40%, but we really want this work done in two weeks. Okay. Now, there's all sorts of ways we can do that. We can let this individual work for a solid week because you know, technically there aren't 40 usable hours, but most of the developers who've worked for me, as long as you don't burn them out, if it's something urgent, you know, they'll just go ahead and get it done. If you leave them alone and let them do it. Or it could take a week and a day. Doesn't matter. They can get it done. But if I've got all these other things competing, plus interruptions, plus None of this is necessarily going to go according to plan. So this 40 hours could end up being 48. I could be, I wanted, I really wanted this in two weeks. I could be a month or I could be two months. if there are other interruptions and other approaches. It's so easy to look at percentages. If I look at 30, 30, you know, our brain says that this equals 100% of some number. If I look at 40 hours, I know to my bones what that 40 hours actually means. That's one working week. So you can, if you keep doing this, you never get anything It's a hard thing to realize, even though we live it every day. Excel makes this easy. It's mathematically simple. And I know it almost sounds pedantic to say you've got to work in hours. But if you really want to work with human beings, I'm going to tell you, human beings only come from most jobs in a day in two units, one half or one whole. If you want somebody to get something done, you probably need to actually schedule them for at least half a day. And talking to developers, they go, no, no, no. They really want as much contiguous time. Now, we've solved this problem in manufacturing. None of this is new news. For those of you who've been around a long time, fundamentally, this is where critical chain comes from. But this is so seductive. It's so easy, and it is so good at masking the problem that there is too much work in the system at any one time. If you've got a hundred people, you can't have a hundred projects. It's pretty clear. I walked into an organization that shall remain nameless and they had pasted up at the top, start of a spreadsheet with all the projects that were going on in their organization. And it ran all the way down to the floor. And they used to come in and look at it because nobody could figure out what to do with it because it was simply too much information. What we're trying to do here is start to simplify what the human brain can process so that when we use the system, we can all start talking about meaningful workloads. Thank you.